everybody, this is Beach Cricket, and today is eight months, eight months, eight months of living on the road full time as a van dweller. So, to celebrate, I thought I would uh, discuss eight different points that I have learned from living on the road these last eight months. And I took notes so I wouldn't forget because, you know, better be safe than sorry. So, number one. Now this is a given, you would think, but it wasn't for me a reality at first because number one, I was used to making probably about four times as much money um, than I am now. I went from that to one check, Social Security, and uh, so not only was I downsizing my life and things, I was downsizing also my money, my cash flow. But it was a choice. Um, I wanted to retire early at 62, which I did. I wanted to start living my life how I wanted to with freedom and I, um, I felt that it would be easier to enjoy my life at this point in stage even with less money. So it has been a lesson. And so I had to learn how to budget with that. And the first thing I had to do was just do a reality check <laughs> and uh, normal things uh, like you do with your budgeting. I've always budgeted, um, you know, at the house and there was never any issues. But with less money, it was just like, whoa, whoa. So all you simply do though is just take the money that you are earning, that you're getting, and you subtract the expenses that you're going to have every month. And from there, the balance, whatever it is, you just divide by how many weeks till your next check. And that gives you a weekly um, allotment of money that you can look at. I think it's easier for a lot of people to look at things weekly, so that's why I'm giving you this scenario. Um, so you have a weekly amount to look at to know what you want to do with. Okay, do I want to drive X amount of miles this week, which is going to cost so, such and such, or do I want to stay in the area a little longer and, you know, just visit a beach or, you know, different attractions in the area, stay at a Walmart, stay at some area around there that I can do free camping to stretch this out even more. Uh, so, you know, just things like that. And so you have a scenario there, you know what your weekly allowance is, and you have a budget. And it's so key to living this lifestyle. You have to think at every corner and every inch of what you're, what you're doing with your money. Because if you don't, you're going to be stranded somewhere with no gas and no food and going, what a dummy I was, I didn't plan this out right. So make sure that you plan a budget. Okay, the second thing that I had to uh, learn is that once you're living in your van, you, you, have to, you have to make it work for you. So if you are pushing things aside or moving this or moving that to get to something else and you're not using it, get rid of it. I had to learn that what I, a lot of the stuff that I thought I had downsized to, excuse me, downsized to, to uh, the perfect situation was not perfect at all. It, um, I had still brought too much stuff. So I had to learn to streamline even more stuff and downsize more things and get them out of here. So that's what I did. Um, it was just, it seemed like at every stop, you know, I was moving things around, I couldn't find things, it was just chaos. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to figure this out. So get rid of the stuff that you don't need and you don't use, okay? Three, set up a routine. Now this is so huge. Um, you have to set up a routine and that involves organizing, okay? You have to set up a routine so that when you get up every day, you know where your toothbrush is, you know where your hairbrush is, your, you, your items that you need to start the day to make your coffee, whatever. 
it's got to be accessible and easy and organized so that you don't feel stressed every day looking and plundering and wondering where where these things are so have your van organized and have have it so that you can maintain a routine like you normally did in your home when you got up in the morning you did certain things to get up and to get awake it's the same thing when you're living out here in your van you have to set up a routine and that involves organizing the van to it so that you can feel normal so that's key very important all right um, number four is always find a way to cut costs and this is crucial because you're on a budget not many of us are millionaires and have a lot of money when we're doing this lifestyle in fact when we go to this lifestyle many of us are on a very limited budget and um, we don't have a lot of savings and if we did have some savings the savings go quickly because you're so excited you're seeing everything you're doing everything you're going a little too fast which you really need to slow down when you first start out don't go too fast go slow that's another thing I should have incorporated in there but you must always look at every angle in in ways to cut costs the one um, some of the things that I do is for instance you need water all the time okay so water for washing and brushing your teeth and cooking and whatever and drinking and so you must have water consistently so I have a jug in here that I have five gallons of water in and then I have four one gallon little container plastic containers that I have as backup and so those little plastic containers are really helpful because I can either go to Walmart and spend 37 cents to fill them up instead of a dollar to buy a new one or I can go to rest stops and fill fill them up there a lot of the rest stops I just was one recently and they had as you walked in the door they had this huge um, it looked like a huge water fountain but it was for jugs and things so you could fill up your water containers and so I got to fill all of mine up and it was wonderful free water you can do gas stations just uh, camping places that you're camping at any ways that you can find to get your free water do it because that will save you a lot of money um, free camping is another way to cut costs Walmart's and different other department stores parking lots uh, free campsite.net they have a lot of free camping areas there's so many different ways to uh, find little areas uh, so that you do not have to pay for camping you can enjoy that without the camping expense to be taken out of your budget uh, let's see here simple meals eating in the van is very important you need to learn what is going to be easy for you to fix it's like today for instance it's warm and sometimes when it's warm in the summer you don't feel like cooking you don't it's too hot it's hot in the van whatever you can go to a picnic place and uh, go outside and cook which I do a lot but sometimes you don't feel like doing that so you got to think of other alternatives that are inexpensive that will feed you inexpensively and so that's something you're going to have to figure out for yourself because everybody's food tastes are different and uh, I um, personally like a lot of fruits and vegetables and I buy a lot of the uh, the salmon uh, packets so that I just love that and chicken and um, tuna I do that and I have peanut butter I do things like that and nuts I have trail packs of nuts and things like that and I love crackers and so that's pretty much soups you know things like that but as far as uh, something quick and easy those are some of the alternatives that I use but you must really learn how to maneuver your money with the budgeting on what you're going to eat and it saves so much money because eating out is just I mean it's fine once in a while you can budget that into your you know your you can budget you know that into your your budget if you want to go eat out um, but I try not to usually <laughs> do that because 
a lot of those choices aren't the healthiest choices so I try to eat um, mostly fruits and veggies and um, and stay on that kind of mode I also tried to save a lot of money on attractions now you can go um, online and look around wherever spot you're at and just put in the city that you're at and push whatever attractions are available in that area and you can find the top 10 or top 20 attractions that they um, think that are the best and look them over and you'll get comments about them underneath these little um, you know spots so it's it's good to find out what other people think about these attractions and what's available and what's free what looks like something you'd be interested in and you can enjoy the area you know with some of their flavor and what they've got to offer and especially if it's free that's just an added plus you know so I do that an awful lot so I really research where I'm at, what's available, and if I like the area, I'll stay there a while more and I'll just discover it and enjoy it. And it becomes more of a a great travel experience. So I do that a lot. Okay, number five, Wi-Fi is everywhere. Now, when I first started out, I was really apprehensive about that. I was so scared I was going to be cut off from the whole reality of my friends and family and how was I going to make my YouTube videos, all that. Well, that's one of the things that I learned. I learned that Wi-Fi is everywhere. Now, some of them are stronger than others and some are just horrendous and not even worth the, worth the effort. But you just, a lot of the fast food places, you can park in there their area and uh, pick up their Wi-Fi, Lowe's, a lot of the Walmarts have it, Home Depot, um, a lot of the uh, little dress shops and things will have them. I've Starbucks, Books a Million, just so many wonderful places to go and um, a lot of the ones that I go are ones that I will usually go inside and try to buy something so that you know as, as a patron to thank them for supplying that free Wi-Fi because it's really crucial when you're out here on the road and you're making YouTube videos to have some good Wi-Fi so that's one thing I had to learn okay number six is the weather now this was a big one with me I did not realize that I really needed to keep my eye on the weather. I don't know what I was thinking, but I learned quick. I was uh, camping and a young guy had a radio that had the weather on it. And I'm like, wow, you know, it was so small. It wasn't the ones that I've seen, the NOLA ra ra you know, weather radios that I've seen in the past. In fact, this is similar to what he had. This is solar. See the solar panel on the front? And it has the weather station on here. It has AM, FM, and it has a little hook here. You can hook it onto something. And it has a flashlight right there. And it has the crank. Let me show you that. Let's see, let's hit this down here real quick. So you can manually charge it up. So it's like $50, it's at Walmart, and it's wonderful. The antenna's right here. It's great. I really like this thing because um, at nighttime, um, a lot of times I like to listen to some smooth jazz or something soft, or it, sometimes I like to listen to other things. <laughs> but anyway, um, my point is I can listen to a radio at night and pretty much for free. So that's really a good, um, useful tool to to have it's really important to know what the weather is when you're where you're going um, you should always check what the weather conditions are going to be because there might be a storm com a storm coming in you don't want to go into an area where hail's coming in there and you're going to have to replace a bunch of windows so you know and plus we're we're traveling to uh, with the weather to make it comfortable for us in our van. So that's that's a key thing right there. The most key thing that I had to learn. 
I just did not. I was oblivious to it. But now I'm not. I learned really quick on that though. Uh, it's just um, a wonderful way to always know what's going on and for your safety and for your comfort. Okay, now number seven is America the Beautiful Pass. This thing is $10 when you turn 62 and uh, so when I got out there this is one of the first things that I bought. I got mine at the Grand Canyon so it's extra special. So anyway, I paid $10 and then now I can go to any national park and it's free. And then I get discounts on camping and other amenities that they might have at a national park. So that's something that I learned and it's wonderful to have. It's a great thing. Once you reach this age, it's a perk. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, it's also good at uh, the uh, federal recreational lands as well as the national parks. Okay, number eight, keep a journal. I started this journal January the 1st when I started my travels eight months ago. I have documented in here things that have happened, good and bad, great um, events, bad places, all the info of everything that could possibly be written down um, so that I would know and remember and have it documented. It's here. I also, along with this, along with the journal, get your postcards. They're only 50 cents. They're usually either um, in the town that you're at, at a Walmart, or um, at the places that you're visiting, some of the national parks or some of the places that you go to. They, they often have a, a postcard that you can buy to remind you, you know, like a little souvenir. So buy them. They're only 50 cents. Put them on your in your van or on your van whatever to document your travels it's it's a fun way to remember the places that you've explored and your adventures I have mine taped to the back two windows of the doors of my van on the inside so that uh, I can smile every now and then when I see all those brightly colored postcards and remember all the fun that I've had so those are the eight um, most uh, memorable things that really st stood out in my brain as far as what I learned on my first eight months living on the road traveling across the USA living free and loving it so I hope that helped I hope you enjoyed it and Beach Cricket out bye bye